Hello folks, we're going to do something as a bit of a side project. I'm a bit tired of Minus Infinity right now, and I think this will be a really nice, uh, really nice detour. So we're going to do this as Mega Man first, and then I'll do another playthrough as base. My idea is maybe to splice the two together in one video, like do a Robot Master series of Mega Man and then edit in base, but we'll see when we get there. So anyways, here we have the introduction stage, and it's already setting up to be pretty uh, interesting with moles, these drill-like enemies. And yes, they are as irritating as they look. Don't step on that fire there, you'll get hurt. Careful of the tackle fires here, that's what they're called, I believe. And that's showing you how not to be careful of them. They spawn pretty quick too, so stay on your toes. Another mole segment here. You can grind these guys for items and such, but they're not very common, I don't think. Pick up that energy power up. And now a water segment. With rise, rising and lowering water, and we are introduced to these enemies. Transferred from Mega Man 8, where you use sprites and everything, they are called the Donpa Cannons. And they're pretty, uh, pretty irritating here. They're placed in very unconventional locations, which makes them very hard to deal with in certain levels, especially this one. At least, hard to deal with without taking damage. And thankfully, I'm not setting that kind of restriction on myself. Another mole room. And now we're outside, where the rain will push us backwards. And there we have monopellers, I believe. They shoot energy pellets, and they're overall quite irritating. And here we have one of our favorites, Sniper Joe. And that's me not playing this game right. You can't get close enough to shoot through a shield, but it's even closer than it was in the NES games in this one, and it's just overall too risky for me to really want to take that risk, so we'll avoid doing that. Oof, this microphone is getting really finicky with me here. So as you can see, we've ran into Proto Man now. And he is confronting this guy. This strange man. Or robot, actually. And he's obtained the blueprints on us combat robots. That doesn't sound very good. King, are you... Or, yeah, his name is King. King, are you gonna do something pretty bad? You ain't going nowhere, King! And then Proto Man. Come on, Proto Man, you can do it! Take him down! Uh! Oh, damn! Damn! Proto Man got it there. He just ate it. Oh, Proto Man, you messed that up completely. Proto Man, are you alright? Nothing, it's just a flesh wound. <laughs> I'll bite your bloody legs off! Pardon me. Leave this to me. Head back to Dr. Light, yeah. Get yourself patched up. All right, King, let's fight. What the hell are you and why are you here? But yet, are you a Dr. Wily robot or not? Because I kind of need to know this sort of thing. Your, your great King Army. Hey, it's the Green Devil from Mega Man 8, except he's not in the spike floor this time. And he's stupid easy. Jump and shoot. Occasionally he will lob green blobs at you, but mainly they're sent across the floor. And that's the introductory boss! You have four data slots. So now we have three bosses to choose from at the beginning, because um, this game works kind of weird. So, we are going to go with the gutsiest one, and pick 
Astro Man. <clears throat> now, generally, you wouldn't want to go for this guy first, but I am not one a man of convention. So I simply just do whoever I want to do, and Astro Man seems like a good choice. So Astro Man's stage, I believe, actually reuses some of his stage graphics from Mega Man 8, because Astro Man was in that game as well. In fact, a majority of this game's graphics are reused from Mega Man 8, if I haven't mentioned that already. Mega Man 8 being the PlayStation Mega Man game. Also released on the Sega Saturn. With additional bosses on that version. That's a database CD. If you can pick up all of them, you get information on various robots from the Mega Man series. Pretty nice as a collector's item. Now here we have the Astro Wall. And yeah. The enemies that spawn out of here are also random. It could be one of the Mets, could be one of the Frogs. There's plenty of ways for this to go terrible. So let's traverse carefully and you'll be alright. And we have these Goo Shooters here. I'll show you what these re uh, screws are for after this level. Remember that pattern, because you're going to have to repeat it or else that thing will shoot at you. And that's what happens when you miss time of jump in that area. Get him out of the way. And here's a room with some nasty platforms. That one rises too, by the way, so don't don't feel too safe when you're at the end. And here's here's some familiar things for anybody who's played Mega Man. Invisible blocks, also, a little crevice up there. For Mega Man to get through easier. Now why didn't I play as the other guy, base? He has unique abilities as well. We'll go through them as I play through with him. And you gotta be really fast there with Mega Man because, um, yeah. Those blocks disappear pretty fast and you gotta be pretty pinpoint. And I forget the timing. Forget the thing here. Nope. Let's try again. There we go. Then we have the traditional up and down enemies. Again, another reused resource from Mega Man 8. Oh, damn. Oh, and we gotta start all the way back here. Yes, the checkpoints are merciless. I really do dislike the sprite flicker, however. That occurs when you get hit. You flash. And, um, when recording, the frame rate does drop. Like, not the speed, but the amount of frames displayed per second. Which means it's harder to see a flashing sprite. Ugh, there we are. Oh, well, that one's really easy. But you can hit it? It's making hit noises, but I don't think you'd actually kill it. Yeah. And here we're at the boss. Astro Man himself. Astro Man's pretty tricky. 
especially trying not to get hit by them. But if you're going through and not worried about the damage you take, you should be alright. He generally bump, jumps up and down the room, and then uses various attacks. One of them is to summon these things. Kill two of them, but leave one. Not like that. I, I, I'm a very poor example of how to beat this boss, I guess. Kill them as they come out, I guess. Because then he will only dive downwards at you. Also, those little satellite orbs, they block shots. And you really do have to hit him right in the head, too. So, uh... Well, not really right in the head, but at the top part of his body. Or else it won't really register. It'll either get absorbed by the satellites or just bounce off them. Now, if he ends up doing this a lot of the fight, it's a pretty easy battle. He hasn't quite used the copy vision yet, though, so we'll see how that goes. And here it is. And then clones of him start coming out and shooting more blasts at you. And he's doing it again. Ask her, man, why? Why do you keep doing this move? You can, like, try and sneak shots in during this, but I don't recommend it. There we go. Now he's doing a move I can... I can work around here and get some hits off him on. And one little shot will just take off one pellet of his health, and that should be enough! Thank the lords I just did that. And from Astro Man we get... A really kicking music soundtrack thing and copy vision. Fairly useful in certain situations, check this out. Creates a clone of you that automatically shoots, and you can shoot as well and move around. So anyways, that concludes Mega Man's first stage, but what about base? Well, we'll get to him soon. Don't you worry. Hello, guys. I told you we were going to do a base version as well. So why not start with base? So here is base. Base's abilities are very different than Mega Man's. He has a dash, a double jump, and a aimable machine gun. However, this machine gun is weaker than Mega Man's Buster in terms of single shot per damage ratio. So you have to hit enemies more with it. Base also does not have a slide. If you dash before you jump with him, you can get an increased momentum, which will probably end up being very useful to you later on. So yeah, base's directional gun makes a lot of things easier. Primarily in the levels where a lot of enemies are going to be situated below or above you, base can gun them down. However, there is one thing that the Mega Buster can do that base's uh, Buster cannot. And then just traverse through walls. So you can shoot an enemy if one was across on that red platform. I could shoot him with Mega Man, but with base, I'd have to jump up and get to him. And this is certainly played on in later levels as well, where certain some sections you'll want to have Mega Man, but other sections you'll be like, damn, I wish I picked base, and vice versa. So the game certainly does have its moments of where the uh, disparity in character choice. But primarily, people play as base in this game. I just enjoy Mega Man more. Not by a whole ton, I mean, base still is great fun for this game, but... 
It just feels more natural for me playing as Mega Man. And yes, he can shoot over their shields, too. His dialogue is also quite different. Since Space is more of an antagonist in the Mega Man series, he speaks a bit differently to Proto Man than Mega Man would. And of course, the dialogue between these two are pretty much the same. Some other little wannabe has come this time as opposed to his little friend. And still, the you ain't going nowhere, King. And then, oh, he's an annoying pest, and then Proto Man shoots and gets mauled. Oh, poor Proto Man. So that's King. There's only room for one strongest in the world, and that's me. The face is quite determined. I'll give him that credit. And again, we fight the Green Devil. And he jumps right over my head, and I do nothing. And as you can see, in, with base, the Green Devil regenerates quite a bit faster. So yeah, he's a lot easier with Mega Man. Well, a lot less time-consuming with Mega Man. And there's the Green Devil, and base just zooms out of there. None of that. Now, the screws are for the shop. Now, Mega Man and Base can buy different items respectively later on, but for now, most of the stuff is the same. And with the bolts you collect within stages, you can buy things. Oh, pardon me. So, with Base's playthrough, I think we will still start with Astro Man. I'll put some disparity in the order later. But right now, we want to unlock three Robot Masters in front of him, because that'll open up for the most uh, diverse playthroughs. And that's what I want. I want these to be diverse. And show off different levels in different orders. A lot of people start off with Cold Man, and I do recommend that. Let's get that disc down there. And yeah, unfortunately Base had to make a sacrifice to get that, but you know what? I'm pretty sure he's alright with that. And what Base can also do with these enemies is shoot diagonally and kill them. And also reach that database CD. We'll review the CDs at the end once I collect them all and stuff. So I might do some collection off screen. More than likely. And the dreaded Astro Wall makes its reappearance. Thankfully, it's not nearly as bad with base. Then again, what really is?
Also, that little cubby that Mega Man that I went in with Mega Man. Apparently, there's a database CD in there too. Interesting enough, I didn't notice that. Look at how much easier that was with base. And it's all because of that freaking double jump. Since Base cannot charge his weapon, Astro Man's going to be a bit of a longer fight with Base. And we can also can't slide, so it might be a bit more difficult in some instances as well. So don't underestimate Astro Man. Not when you can't really do a whole ton of damage. This is where the lack of sliding really does hurt base. Oh. Or a dash shortcut button. Is there a dash shortcut button? There could be, but I don't know about it. Oh, there is. Look at that. We do, as a matter of fact, have a dash shortcut button. So I guess that is what I'll be using throughout the entirety of the, uh... Hell? There we go. Man! It took about as long as Mega Man's did, actually.
And copy vision works the same for base, except you don't get to keep his machine gun during this. For balance sake. And now to like, let's let's buy something with those screws just to just to show you how the buying system works. Exit parts, yeah, sure. And then you press B to leave. Alright, so next time we will take on Dynamo Man with Base, and Pirate Man, and uh, actually Tengu Man with Mega Man. See y'all.